G'day and welcome to part 8 of our little Suzuki T250 rebuild. It wasn't supposed to be, I was just going to use the engine and stick it in, the spare engine and ride around. And it runs beautifully. But the Kickstarter didn't retract. And I knew going into this that if you go splitting cases on an old bike that's 50 years old, you're going to find gremlins. And gremlins we found. Uh, not the bike's fault. The usual thing when you get an old car or bike... Um, somebody's been there before and they've done their version of a good repair. In this case, there was um, these bikes use like a half ring to locate bearings and your needle roller bearings are held in by a dowel or located by a dowel and the last person to have it apart didn't know about the dowels and consequently cinched it all up, the crankcases, and broke a piece off and squashed the other dowels into the alloy. And so there was no way of locating them. And that was also the problem with the Kickstarter. They had a, a rotten little piece of thread in there when the thing was moving around and all this sort of stuff. So in this bike, we start and pull the engine out, the spare engine that I got with the bike I keep banging on about, and pull it apart. I've repaired the case. I've repaired it the COVID way. I haven't welded it. I've done something else. And... Even if that doesn't work out being successful, at very worst, you're going to get a small oil leg. It's not a big deal, really. But uh, in this one, anyway, we finish the case, the lower case, and have it all ready to reassemble. Then in the next video, which will be shortly, uh, we'll put the bottom end together, the clutch in, the side covers, all this sort of stuff. And then that has to sit and wait for the parts to come because one of the parts was a piston kit. And so I want to put that in on the bench because it's just easy to put the circlips on and all that sort of stuff. And then the bike is almost done so it's only a few more videos and we're out of it so with that being said i hope you enjoy right, we're going to pop this out again that's the problem with the kickstarter it just stays down and i've got to put another spring in there too that it tends a bit loose i've taken that off because i wanted to measure the bore um oh there's fuel sitting there um so i'm just going to do that and stick it on the bench. Right, where are we up to? We've got the two smokes we pulled apart yesterday. We've now got a really naked bike, which is quite a shame, but it doesn't matter because we're on to bigger and better things. Here's the engine. Um, it's all sort of pulled out and looking fairly sweet. Um, time to pull the bottom off and have a bit of a sticky and see what's going on with that uh, shaft. Right, well, I'm going to take that oil pump off because when I stick him upside down, I don't want to damage it all and the stator and the wiring and then I'll throw some toilet rolls at it. I'm very impressed with how clean this thing's inside. Uh, let me just pull these little suckers out. What the hell? Hang on a moment. I wonder if oh, the bloody spring's all right. The spring is okay but it's missing the pole. I think it's bent. Well, let me get you closer to have a look. It's kind of bent out. Can you see there? It's sitting proud. I don't know why. Maybe there is some damage. I'm still gonna to have to take it apart, I think. I'll take that, there's a, a knob thing in there for that spring-loaded bit. There's something up with it. I don't know what it is yet. But it worries me that it's sitting out like that, because the other one wasn't. It sort of perched on there really, really well. So I'm not sure what the issue with that is. I can take that drive shaft out. So we'll keep going, I think, and see what we come up with. Well, you are never going to guess what just happened. I've got the toilet rolls there. Can you see the front of the engine? Yes, you can. They're just to protect the pistons. And the reason for that is because um, these pistons were taken out of the other engine and you're not supposed to use circlips twice. I don't want to take them out. In saying that, they shouldn't even be there in the first place. But I have ordered a second set. I've ordered a, a, or a new set of one wheel oversize. And so I'm leaving them there for now. But look at this. What the hell? It retracts. What the freaking hell is that? And it retracts well. So, what's going on behind here? I've not the foggiest notion what that means. What a 
cranky is stuck in the top case. But it doesn't want to come off. Uh, I've got everything unbolted. Someone's used Celastic again. Lovely stuff. Um, is that lifting? Ah, oh, it's all glued down. Um, 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 okay. Um, I just can't afford to drop it, that's all. There's that spring. That's going to be a pain in the ass to do. Let me see, can I grab a piston? Oh, let's turn him over. Have a look at this. I'm hoping you can see this, this fuel over here, so it's overfueling. Well, I think it is. Um, that's all that is. It worries me. Yeah, that's fuel. Um, fuel and oil. It worries me a bit because the crankshaft is supposed to locate. Um, you got some bearing retainer things there, and also those pins here, and it's stuck. It's bonded in the top case. Don't know why. Don't know what that's all about. This thing is so clean, it's nuts underneath there. It's just perfect. It's much, much cleaner. This was the spare engine, remember? That's an earlier model, and it's a lot cleaner than the other one was. There's a couple of things, though. Someone's been in here and they've messed up. The pin there is flush, almost. And you can see it's been sort of smacked into here. Not in where it's supposed to be. So I don't know what that story is. So that itself is true. That, I don't know if you can see from where you are. I mean, it's got a bit of a warp in it, but I think it's better than the other one. Speaking of which, there is the other one. The other one's here. Oh, the other one is probably a bit straighter. I just don't know what the story with it is. I'm hoping you can see what I can see. Now, okay. That's the old engine, the original one for the bike we weren't using. The crank's a bit rusty, we've talked about that, and the seal was stuffed on the other side and being glued up. Um, the seal's a little bit harder than the ones that are out of this, so clearly that's better. Now, the other thing that's scary, when I pull these gear sets out, I'll put the ones on the left for the new engine, well, the one that I want to use, is it's the same freaking story where we've got a mark. Which one is it? It's not that one, it must be this one. One of them had a mark on it where the. Where did I see that? One of them's got a mark on it where they missed. And it's the same thing. And I can't get those out. The only thing I can think of doing. That one's probably all right. That just pokes out. But I've got Buckley's are getting them out. The only thing I can think of doing, there's two, there's two ways around it, using that casing. But the thing that worries me about that is this casing is a lot newer than this one. Made it in a completely different time. That's even wrong. They go on those. Made it a completely different time. And so there could be tolerance differences between them, particularly if you use those gear sets. They might mesh slightly differently. You know. I guess in one way it's not so bad. If it was a Honda, I wouldn't even dream of it because the Hondas use bearing shells. They don't use roller bearings, so the cases are matched where you have to sort of think these probably matched as well to a degree. But the only thing I can think of doing is just dropping a tiny bit of weld on there and pulling the pin out and finishing it and putting it back in upside down, if you know what I mean, to give it that protrusion. It only needs to protrude. I tried to get these out and I couldn't move them. But it's a real bloody worry. I don't know why they've done it like that. I mean, it's obviously a mistake. So, you know, the original one, the starter worked because obviously it was pinned in the right spot. The starter failed on this one because it's got a bloody thread in there. Which one's over there? It's this one here. You know, I mean, what on earth is that? Does it even hold it in the right place? Where is it? Let's have a look. I don't think it's supposed to move. What's this one like? I reckon that's the problem. Well, at least I hope it is. I think it is. I'm not sure. Oh, 
how that moves as well. There's a circlet goes on the outside anyway. But that is a lot different from that. That's what I think the issue is. So that would explain it. I'm relieved that there's no pieces of case missing or anything like that. That fits in that way. I think with these, you actually have to wind it over. Take that shoe out there, wind it over, then put the shoe in. I think that's how you get the spring pre-tension. But you would have to do that once the case is on. But that is not as good as that. And I think that's what the problem might have been. So... Yeah, we've got a broken off screw in there. It's just not gonna, that's not gonna work. That is not gonna work. Look at the difference in the condition of the casting there to the one that was original. It looks like something's actually dropped in there, it's let go. It's not very good. But I've marked these, these are the forward ones. F, like that. slippery not going to be easy to put this the Honda ones are just they're really really good they're really user friendly so that goes on first then that one whoops which has an R on it for rear then this then the detent wheel thing goes over there Goodness me! Then we can get the shift drum out. Which is this guy. Very interesting. There's a, a roller bearing in there. Which I don't think wants to come out. Damn, I might have to block that up when I wash it because I don't want anything getting in there. So it doesn't do a damn thing. Beautiful. What a pain that was. I did find something else that wasn't great. And you can probably see it if well, you can probably see it if you look carefully. Someone's glued this piece on. <laughs> These all came out. Um, all the flush ones, they're all good. Um, the way I'm going to handle this is where the wood can't pick it up. Damn it! I need my magnet. Where's my magnet? Um, crap! Oh, here it is. Where the weld is, I'm just going to run around the grinder and leave the weld there so it sits. It sort of sits up proud where they're supposed to, because those holes will be pushed in a little bit more than what they were. Looks like um, this part has let go. I couldn't get the seal out of something. All sorts of trouble. I didn't know why. Which spooks me a bit with my engine because the crankshaft glued in. I don't like the idea of that. But that's a different engine, a different person did it. So they've put it in and they've broken it. Um, so they've glued that in. It's an old repair. I can see like there's all grease covering it and all that sort of stuff. So I'm not sure what it, what it, what it is or what's caused it. But um, ultimately, it's still a better case than the other one. So I'm still going to go with it. I should really get it welded. At work, I could get that actually welded properly at work, but work shut. And once we built the engine, or we'll put the engine back together, I should say, uh, we've got bucklers getting um, in in time, if you know what I mean. I grabbed it with some multi grips and it just fell off. That's all the powder from the gloves. And it's just. Okay, so now it's time to clean up a bit. I'm using this one in the spare engine. That's got a much better foot on it because that doesn't mean sliding around doing the wrong thing. Um, so that's out of <laughs> that's out of the original bike engine, which is that one. Uh, this one's out of this one, but it's got some wear there and it's sort of flared out at the end. I've taken that stupid bit of thread out, which was jammed in there, and that never worked properly. So that can just sort of stay in there. Um, and basically, I'm just going to stick the lid on. Oops. And just chuck a few bolts in and then that can sort of sit over yonder it doesn't really matter um 
yeah, I'm not putting the gear sets in because they're going for a holiday overseas. I might need to refer to it though, um, to, you know, try and remember how things go, but I think I'm right for now. All oh, right, so we've got a February 2016 version of the Sunday Age. I'm just going to grab a bunch of them. Oh look, it's coronavirus. Right, uh, here is a shaft, the clutch goes there, this rod goes on the inside of it. And the gears look lovely, the bearing, perfect. Absolutely lovely. So let's give this a roll around and take any excess oil off it. And we will wrap the thing up. Just remember that that's going to fall off the end. These are going on a special one way trip to a destination far away called Canada. I'll wrap them in bubble wrap and all that sort of stuff. Um, they can go. And that will help a good friend get his bike in tip top shape. The other thing I'm going to do. Is throw in this solder. Your brother couldn't join wise because his solder sucks, so I'm going to throw that in as well. So I will stick them in the post in the next week. I'll put my glove back on. And that will hopefully help. Now let's get this case out and have a bit of a look. Right, here's that case. It's a good case, but a bit of a sad case. We've got these all extracted. That's good. These ones here were all cool. So I'm sweet with that. It's filthy. We don't care because we're going to clean it right up. Um, not with this dirty rag, but I'm just going to do a little bit of preparation before I clean it. And one of the things that worries me is there's a, a needle roller in here, which has got gunk on the side of it. Can I get that off? Where are my pliers? I need to get that bit. There we go. Now, I can't take that out without damaging it, and it is in pearly condition. I think it is. <laughs> I hope it is. And the seal. Now, the seal, I should put new on but I haven't got one. We're in lockdown, remember? And I'm going to block these off to stop any water or degreaser getting in there. And the way I'm going to do it. Because ultimately what I need to do is I need to stick this back on. And that was glued in there like that. And it wasn't glued in well because it was stepped out. There's about a millimetre out there, which is no good. So I need to clean this up. I think that looks like aerodite to me, which is a two-part epoxy. Um, and it's stuck in there, but when I grabbed it with multis to check it, it just fell off. Um, now the thing with that... That's a case out job, if I have to replace it, so I'm not going that way. Whereas that I can do in the bike later on if I need to. I'm not even worried about it at the moment. But I need to figure out how to get all that glue off. Whoops. And it's just covered in just crap. But I'm not going to use anything mechanical at the moment because I need to seal this up. So I always keep bicycle tie tube around because it is really handy. You never know when you're going to need it. But when you do, you're always glad you've got one lying around. So I've got 
a wad punch here. I'm just going to smack these holes in. I'll do it outside. Okay, so the idea of bolts and <laughs> tie tubes is to seal these these things off. I've made the hole deliberately too small, um, just so I can actually. Which was which? Was that for there? I think it was. No, that's too small. Oh, this is supposed to go in from the back, isn't it? Like that. Mm -hmm. So then, um, I just don't want muck in this bearing. It's actually in very good condition. It's sort of center it and grab a spinner and tighten him up. Because, well, as I said, I think I said, did I say? I just don't want to have to wait for bearings to come in from overseas. If I knit the bottom end together, I think that'll be all right. That'll certainly seal at the back. And the other one, the gear shift one, um, I have to do from the front because the washer and fitter in the back is smaller. I mean, this isn't really correct what I'm doing. There are rules of this sort of thing, but I'm not taking them to the nth degree. The circumstances call for no. I'll just reposition this one just to give it a bit better seal. Now that should seal, and it should seal quite well. Um, so now we can just go around picking out bits of grot like that. Look at all this. And it's gritty. I can feel it. It's really, really yeah, gritty. But when your sprocket's sort of running in an area like this, you're going to get all the muck from the road, the chain, you know, all this sort of other stuff. So I'm just going to go around, dig out all this snot. This is quite interesting. I've found this out. I've dug the adhesive away from there. I don't know if you can see that. That's the hole for that pin. Um, and remember, these are all sort of sunk in and, and squashed into the case. This one's got some sort of plug in it. Um, where... That one is unaffected. But what I think's happened is they've, 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 they haven't lined the pins up and that's just broken that piece off. I think that's the reason for it. And they've gone, oh dear, and glued it back on. I think that's what's happened, which is just the worst. It's also missing a piece from behind there. So when I glue it, I'm gonna have to just put a bit of extra adhesive in there or something. But it's just the crummiest, crummiest bit of um, automotive work. Really, really poor. Um, but just getting this off, this isn't great adhesive, but it's coming off reasonably easy. I think, it, I think it's Araldite. I really do. I'm sure it is. It looks like it. And it's sort of... I'm just being gentle with it, but it's just peeling off, which is kind of what we wanted. Whoops. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. That's cleaning up well. Good. Good. This is very common. This is what you get with, you know, with people tinkering with their bikes and cars. I don't know how many times I've seen problems. Look at the XC. I mean, there was nothing wrong with that shell before. The guy cut bits off it and made a hell of a mess of it. And so you're going around fixing other people's problems, but you see that a lot. Um, servicing and repair charges are expensive, and so people want to do it themselves. But this is the superior case to the other one, so I'm going with it. Right, I've given this a, a sort of preliminary clean, I suppose. Um, the outside still looks like that. Um, that's why I go to the Hydro Blaster, because the outside will look just as good as the inside when you go and see a person like that. They're just really good at what they do. Um, I wonder how these little ceiling gigs did. See if anything falls out of here like greasy water. If they do, I'm just going to have to use a pressure washer, uh, sorry, air, compressed air, to sort of evacuate any snot out of there. Oh, that's sealed. I've got to dry this properly overnight. I'll take it inside and stick it over a heater. One of the... Oh, that's stuck. Yeah, and it didn't get in there either, you can see that. Bit of dirty muck from the original uh, when it was running. I don't know what you can see. My equipment here is rubbish. Now the the thing is, you can see any a bit yellowy coloured stuff there is the old adhesive. There's a bit in there too, which they didn't get out. I'll just hassle that with a scriber. Um, this bit here cleaned up quite well. 
We'll have to clean it with proper solvent and that sort of stuff too. But there are a couple of bits missing from it. Um, and they didn't come off with the adhesive. I had a look at the adhesive. Hang on, where are we? So, yeah, it's not satisfactory. And there's a crack there too, just in that piece there. But And also the part underneath is missing. That was all sort of clagged up with glue. So, yeah, whatever we do isn't going to be perfect. It really does need to be welded. Um, but I just, I can't get to a welder. And I've never welded aluminium, so I don't really want to experiment with this. Right. Well, I didn't film this. I probably should have. I've got a Dremel with a engraving attachment on it. And I've drilled a hole and pinned this. There's no adhesive under the moment. It's just pinned. Nice and sturdy. It can move around. I've got a dead level there. It's probably not even ten thousands out there. Although the crack, it's been filed to allow room for it easy before. Now the reason I've pinned it there, that's the thickest part I could do it. And also it provides a bottom to the um, pin. So as we stick the pin in, which this isn't, this is a tab, it can't push through, which is what happened before. I'd actually pushed that whole piece out before. So we can set the pin height up. There's also this guy here, which goes on top of the seal. And it's shouldered in a way that it sits in that groove. And I may need to notch this. Hang on, where are we going? Here we go. It looks like it's sitting in there properly. So we need to dummy fit the other case on top just to make sure that closes on there properly. I might go and do that now, actually. Uh, in the meantime, I've got all sorts of bits and pieces out. I'm just going to clean up here a bit. I did pull all my really, really tiny taps out. I've got a little container full of taps. I considered um, putting the adhesive in, having a tapped hole in the case, and then screwing one of these guys in and then cutting it off so it's a threaded pin. But I'm really nervous about this thing cracking again because it's very thin just on the edges. Um, it does move side to side, but the, um, the adhesive will stop that. So I believe that's going to work if I don't think it's going to come out. The pin's going to be, once I've got adhesive in there, that's going to be all glued up. And there'll also be adhesive in the base of it. Um, I'm just going to take that little knob where it's bent off this part here. I hope you can see it where you are. I'll just take that off. That'll allow me to smooth the adhesive around there. The adhesive we're using is, oh, I think I've got that, yeah. Steel weld, which is the same sort of thing as JB weld. Um, it's good for aluminium and all that sort of business. Having said that, the other repair was dodgy, I believe, but it stayed there. Um, we don't want that coming off. If, on the off chance, it does come off, which it can't, but if it was to, not the end of the weld, you'll just get a bit of an oil leak, um, as well as that will... Where's the chain? Yeah, the, it'll sort of flick out and get disposed of, but... Um, you know, by the time, you know, your bearing's still supported, it'll be your oil seal which is compromised. And the oil seal, once that's glued, and we'll put some seal around there, some Honda Bond or something, that'll sit there. And I think that's going to be all right. I thought I was going to have to notch this thing, just in the base to clear the pin. But I've got the pin as low as I can get it, with it being still effective. To get through that hole so that's where we're up to i'm going to clean up a bit we'll get the top case and we'll see how it fits i think my tea's gone cold before i dummy fit it i'm just gonna i've taken a pin that i welded onto and ground it down ground the weld down so it's still taller than it was um, because i want to dummy fit everything to the um case before I use an adhesive. I think that's a bit too proud. It's only about an eighth of an inch. Oh no, that's not. How deep's the hole in the gear? In the bearing? There's about a millimetre there, so I reckon that's probably alright just there. You want to do this stuff before you glue it and commit because that's just going to be your worst nightmare if you glue it all down and this glue is pretty strong 
Then you find out you were wrong. <laughs> that would really, really suck. So, is that the right one? No, that's too big. Oh, should be small. Oh, there it is. So I've got to manually um, grind these pins down so that they protrude the right amount. I even think that might be too much. So I might take a tiny bit more off it. But... That's not bloody right. Oh, there it is. Okay. Because I only just stick out a tiny bit. Anyway. Let us take a look. Right. Now that's sitting up. Now it's not. Oops. That looks spot on actually. That looks really spot on. The, the issue with this is this crank has been adhered in and the, the rubber is so good on the seals. It's really good. And if I pull that out, it's going to pull the rubber casing off. So I have no choice but to put it in this way, unless I want to really, you know, go nuts rebuilding the thing, and I don't. The other thing is, the best thing to do with that is to weld it. But with COVID, I can't get into work, and they've got all these brilliant welders there. But the problem is, if I, go, if I wait until COVID is finished, it's going to be next term as a minimum, which is October, and those guys are going to be run off their feet. So... I probably won't see it till Christmas, maybe even after Christmas, and I'm not prepared to wait. I just want to make sure it's going to close up. Uh, so, it's quite heavy. I'm just going to have to pick it up like this. Um, so I'm holding the crankshaft. Oh, it go? oh, it goes in there. And I want to see it go down. So, here's our piece. I'm just going to knock that lip off. That's the pin going through. And the outside of the pin, I'm just going to take that bit off there. Quite a bit more. Hopefully, you can see. Radio. I've got the... Um, these parts all washed in thinner, and I've got a Q-tip or a cotton tip, whatever you want to call it, and some fresh, clean, shiny thinner, and I'm just going to get any muck off of that. Now this is going to be tricky because when I put the adhesive in, some of it's going to go into that channel. So I am going to put that washer in, and that'll sort of give it some more support even though it's not meant to be in there Ugh. and before i get too carried away with the glue i'm gonna suck down some more tea mm -hmm. got a problem with that stuff i don't, watch, I don't drink too much of it because it becomes a little bit unhealthy well, we don't have to i'm not going to heat it up heat it up i'm just going to dry off any thinner to make sure that it's nice and clean and dry Hopefully this extension that he puts up with the current draw. Can you dry those bits off? Probably set the thing on fire, eh? I think that'll probably do. Now I've got to assemble this thing, hey? Now I've not used this adhesive before. Not the foggiest what it's like. Damn. Oh, it's a fly in here. Alright, that should do. And then just pull it back a little bit and put the cap on. That one there goes oh, nice. That goes in like that. Alright, no, it's cool. I've also cleaned that screw stick up. So we mix him up. You got five minutes to muck around with this. We've got 24 hours for full cure, and I still feel like tea. Hmm. That's about the consistency I thought it would be. I was hoping it wouldn't be too runny. 
Okay, let the games begin, hey? Gonna stop some down this hole. Because I want it to... I want the pin to drag it with it. Alright. So far so good. Let's give it more glue. Um, in here. Uh, this stuff appears to be going off already. That's going to make sure there's no dags anywhere that are going to stop any other parts going where they're meant to go. And hopefully we have ourselves a win. That would be good. Yeah, it's gone off. Okay, so there it is. Um, it's not the prettiest repair, but that's all I could do with glue um, and a pin. So the main thing is that's all all right in there, so that will fit in. The seal will fit well. This seal I'm not going to use. I'll use the other one because this one's got remnants of other glue on it but the radius is fine. Um, so that's gonna work well. The other thing with this seal is it's not, it's solid right or all up, all up to the sort of the center, which means, and that's all sealed in there, so no oil from the bearing's gonna get out. The only purpose of this is that the clutch actuation rod runs through it, and that runs through the center of the gear set anyhow. So it would have been nicer being welded. I'm worried that it might have been a bit too thin. Um, I'm not sure, but you know, it's a COVID thing and I can't get out to get any work done. So that's what we've got to go with. And I think it's going to be fine. It looks nice and um, it looks like we're not going to have a problem with it. So yeah, it's all good. So the next video I've got to, um, I'll just do this anyway. I've got to take those other pins, grind them down, grind the weld stone on them, stick them upside down so they protrude the right amount. So I'll do these three here and we'll put the engine together. And I think after that, we'll just chuck it back in the bike. Uh, it'll be all right. So on that note, thanks very much for watching. Take good care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon.
What do you reckon? Shit. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs>